Coaches Connection, connecting you and the greater DMV to local sports programs, as well as the coaches that inspire our local youth. Welcome to another edition of Coast Connection. I'm Ferrari Tate, your host, and I'm so honored to be sitting here with an amazing coach that's making a difference in the lives of our students here in the DMV. Well, coach, I can tell everybody who you are, but no one can do that better than yourself. No so problem. please tell the world who you are, coach. Malcolm Battle from uh, Bard Early Education High School mm -hmm. in War 7. Um, Go ahead, tell us some more now. Formerly of Cesar Chavez Charter School. Yeah. I was there for 14 years. Uh, this will be my second year at Bard. Um, our first year having sports. Okay. Uh, great situation. Kids get an opportunity if they uh, they do everything that's laid out for them to get uh, 60 college credits and an associate's degree. 60? 60. Okay. 60. Now, a lot of y'all don't know what bar is because it's a new, right? It's new. The it's new. A third, the new, the really newest kid on the block, DCPS based. Um, but again, it, it's based out of Bar College in New York. Okay. Okay. Um, and they have a few other campuses across the country, mm -hmm. um, but we're the only school in D.C. that gives kids the opportunity to get a complete associate's degree within the building. Wow, that's amazing. And you are the head of what? Athletics. I'm the athletic director and the boys basketball coach. Okay. Now, now you heard that, right? But that's just what he's doing now. We're going to go a little bit about <laughs> what you used to do because that's a story. And I want you to understand that our coaches today are bringing the past and the present and making a difference in the lives of our students today. So give us a little bit about, you know, that, that so past I'm, story. I'm a native Washingtonian, 48 years. Uh, I grew up actually around the corner from where Bart is located okay. on the Benner Road corridor on the southeast side. Um, then as I got older, we moved on to the Benner Road corridor on the northeast side. Okay. So for pretty much the majority of my life, I've worked or lived in Ward 7. Got it. Um, Went to Archbishop Curl. Okay. Um, played the first year, played the first two years, excuse me, um, of high school basketball, and then my junior year, we had a major um, tragic incident in our family. Father committed suicide, mm -hmm. missed a lot of time from school, was ineligible to play. Twelfth grade year, wasn't covering all bases. Doing See, I'm, I'm glad you put that in there because. Our young persons are dealing with lots of trauma, and and we do have a lot of programs in the city to support the family. But sports played an amazing role in in you kind of getting through that. You know absolutely, what I mean? absolutely. It wasn't easy, nah. but you said something a little earlier. You said mental toughness, right? So yeah. you got it. <laughs> um, Tell us about that if mental toughness, brother. So I. Didn't get to finish playing high school basketball. Um, had an amazing high school coach, though, Carol Holmes, um, who gave me an opportunity to uh, walk on at Merrill Eastern Shore. Went down there and fumbled the ball again, proverbially, and then transferred to Salisbury State and did the same thing. Um, so at that point, it's like, you know what? The one consistent in all of this is me. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just not meant for me to play basketball, so let me just finish school. Um, but I actually came home and was working as a substitute teacher uh, at Linda Hill Elementary. And but you finished school. Finished school. He finished school. So that was that. That's that mental toughness that he's talking about. Uh, that mental toughness not only came from that strong family, but you was cultivated in your relationship with your coaches. Can you talk a little bit about that? I, I mean, it was just a different time, you know. Um, of course, my father wasn't in the home. Yes. Um, so my my basketball coach was was pseudo dad and it was other men in the community as well mm -hmm. um youth coaches at the boys and girls club on Benner Road uh at the rec center um Miss Green over there on Benner Road Teresa Green <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, absolutely I tell you it's not just one person that makes a difference now you're not you even know you didn't know I even knew yeah, her Teresa did you Teresa Green oh yes Teresa Green Ben Bullock <laughs> yes Sonny Hicks um and, and those those relationships going forward we don't have a gym at bar yeah. Because we're temporarily housed in elementary school. Okay. Go around the corner, Sonny Hicks, who ran Kelly Miller when yeah. I was a child, now runs Ridge Road Rec. That relationship. We, yeah, and we transitioned <laughs> where we can use the facility for us to have yes. sports this year. Um, so, you know, and the fact that never gave people any problems yes. was all about sports. And so they know I care about my community. Yes. There now, it is. You got access to this and whatever your kids need, they have access to. 
So this is why Coach Connection wants to continue to make sure the coaches today have the resources that they need to continue. So I want to ask you now, what message of that mental toughness you talked about still resonates in you today that you give to the other students that you're coaching? We, we, because it's not just myself, it's a slew of coaches okay. um, outside our program and inside our program. But one of the things we try to impress upon them is when you leave the nest, especially if you have an opportunity to play college ball, it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. So people's livelihoods are contingent upon your production. Yes. And so we need to understand now that there's certain things you just cannot do. Um, just how you occur yourself on social media, um, how you conduct yourself in a building. And if I have to be just a little tough on you to get you to understand that, then so be it. Um, more times than that, it's understood. Every now and then, it's like, well, he's been too tough on me, but life is tough. Yes. With black man in America, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's yeah. not going to get any softer for you when nah. you walk outside these doors. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. And to, to grow up in this community and to come back and to make a difference in their lives, how did that make you feel as a man and a coach? Um, I feel like I had the best job in the world. I mean, I love sports and I love kids and to do it in your community. It's like a double bonus. Like it's almost, I have another friend of mine, um, Irk Singletary is from the same neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Who was yep. the coach of Sidwell Friends. Yep. Yep. And he always talks about walking trophies. Walking trophies. Walking trophies. Dive into that. Tell us about that. Walking trophies. That you can see, you can physically see somebody tangible that you impacted and see how it could have been if you wasn't a part of their life and now see them become like school teachers, firefighters, policemen, yeah. um, young men who don't devalue or take away from the community but add to it. Yeah. A lot of the other coaches said just that they don't always go to the professionals, but they always come back to the source of who they are and be the best, be it firemen or fathers or daughters and then wives. Yeah. It's something about what happens. So I want everyone out there to know that Coach Connection is also asking you and giving you the opportunity to support. So can you tell everyone, before we get into those walking trophies, gotcha. how do, if we want to help you help them, our children, how can we help? What can we do? You can reach out um, via email, uh, my email uh, information is mbattle at bhsec dot bar dot edu. All right, do it again. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> All right, we'll make sure everyone gets this. mbattle <laughs> at bhsec dot bar dot edu. Seems a little long way. Yeah, it's all um, good. Is there a telephone number that you feel comfortable with? Two zero two eight five four eight zero nine eight. Um. That's my Google number. They can leave me text message, whatever. There it is. He um, made it personal. Yeah. It gave you the opportunity to reach out to him. And we're going to talk about some of the walking trophies. When you think about success and you have those boys and girls, right? Mm -hmm. Young men and women, future, our future leaders, because they won't just be all playing athletics. But when you see them, what's some of those principles that you want to inspire in them on and off the court? Um... The biggest thing is to see, um, so we'll take, because I'm routine, as a coach, you routinely ask who's the best kid you ever coach. Okay, okay. And I try not to answer that. Okay, I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> no problem, I appreciate that. But in terms of points scored, uh -huh. um, we had a young man at, young man at Cesar Chavez named Marquis Mazik, um, scored over 2,000 points, yeah. played at Austin P, played Division One basketball, then played at West Virginia State, mm -hmm. who was a school teacher at Rocket Ship Academy. Oh, wow, and that's beautiful. I got a call last week from a buddy of mine who's at Rocket Ship, and he said Marquis was in the uh, office um, having dialogue with staff members about we got to be better mm -hmm. to be better for our kids. Wow. And so, you know, I just recall where he was in 2008 as a student, and, you know, not to go too in depth into his story, the struggles he had early on as a student. Yeah. Not student athlete as a student because his mom wasn't letting him play. Got it. Um, Miss Saunders it. wasn't having it. Yes. Um, and now to see him like challenging other staff members to be better educators to help younger people in Southeast, like it doesn't get any better than that. Well, watch this. So that's why I'm going to challenge you out there to be a, a, a active player in the lives of our coach and the student that they coach. And so I want to ask you, do you accept volunteers? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, 
Because it's not always about money. No, no, yeah, no. Because sometimes no, it's just not. somebody who goes through the clearance and 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 goes through those processes. What are some of the um, some of the other individuals who might not have been physically a part of the coaching team? Because a lot of times we we think, well, you know, I don't have children anymore. I don't have anything to give. But there's a lot that our volunteers can do to support. What are some of those things? If they want a mentor, if they want to provide tutoring opportunities. Um, I know just one of the things early on when I was at Chavez was that our kids don't know how to eat properly mm. um, in regards to athletics. You want to donate Nutri-Grain bars or uh, muscle milk and things of that nature, things so our kids can eat properly before and after um, they're working out and practicing or having games. Um, yeah. It's all types of ways to have your handprints on programs. Yes. With, um, it doesn't have to necessarily be a gang of money in the form of a check. Right, like, right. You know, it could be something as small as 12 pack of Gatorade. Oh, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. You heard it from the coach. We have to stop watching TV every night talking about uh, them. No, they're us and they're our children. And these coaches are connecting to your children. They're connecting to your community. And we need you to connect to them. And so before you go, coach, I want to go in one more direction. No problem. There's always future. We might not always be there, right? But there's always a future. What do you see in the future for yourself as a coach and the students that you're coaching? Um, I, I've told routinely people that I believe I have, no disrespect to my, my, my sister here, I feel like I have the best job in the city because it gives, the opportunity gives kids and student athletes to ap obtain that associate's degree. Yeah. especially east of the river where that's just you know that's one of the things that we lack yeah um i feel like it puts you halfway in front of everything having 60 college credits um for me personally just continue to help kids get to school um and even if they don't want to go to school mm -hmm. to kind of show them like the difference between what a job and what a career is mm -hmm. um it's real and, you know how you can be self self preservation and self motivated and take mm -hmm. care of yourself and be good people. Yeah. Um, I'm good with that, and not necessarily about winning championships. Because yeah. let me see, this is year 15, mm -hmm. so I can't tell you who won any championship in 2007. Got it. But I can tell you who played for me that went to school that are now doing well for themselves. Yeah. Real talk, coach connection, connecting you to real people who are coaches making a difference in the lives of our children, meaning your child too. I want you to know that we are honored to have you here on this platform, like all the other coaches that you have experienced and the coaches that you named who made an a, a impact in your life. I want to personally thank them also. Absolutely. And if there's any closing words that you would like to give to our parents, because our parents are blessed with these children. You know, I'm a, I'm a father. You know? gotcha. But uh, I've heard it before. Sometimes we have to share our blessings with right, the right coaches Absolutely. to get our children to be the best people. So is there any words of wisdom you want to give to some of our parents? Don't be afraid to let coaches hold your kid accountable. Mm. Accountability is like a lost art. And I don't think, you know, we normally hear these kids are different, these kids are different, these kids are different. And I, I argue a lot with uh, my peers that kids aren't different mm -hmm. there's a lot of things adult based that are different wow. that impacts kids <laughs> holding kids accountable it's been my experience when you hold them accountable they're fine with it for the most part yes but if they have somebody saying but well, nah you don't have to do this you don't have to do that no matter what they say mm -hmm. then it transitions to the kids and how they deal with adults when they're held accountable so don't be afraid to let your kid be held accountable because at some point mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going to be held accountable. Yeah, accountability. Yeah. Yeah, he's real. Yeah, it's a lost art. Yes. So once again, I want to thank you so much, Coach, for and coming on. I appreciate on. you having me. Coach Connection, stay connected to coaches in your community by more than just thinking about them. Be with them as much as you possibly can in all the ways, and you can see that you make a difference also in the lives of our young persons. Thank you so much for tuning in. Coaches Connection, connecting you and the greater DMV to local sports programs, as well as the coaches that inspire our local youth. This show has been brought to you by the Scholar Athlete Sports Network, SASN.TV.